Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wall of Power Radio Hour. This is your host, Paul Netson. Our guest tonight, Mr. Lonnie Knight, has long been one of my favorite guitarists in town and has won countless awards doing just that. His career spans over 50 years as a rock and roller, sideman, session man, singer, songwriter, producer, and all around cool cat. He's played on damn near every stage, bar, club, or restaurant in Minnesota and the upper Midwest. And he has played with a wide variety of great Midwest musicians. With no further ado, my good friend, Mr. Lonnie Knight. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Good, Lonnie. Thanks for joining us this evening. It was evening. a pleasure. Yeah. Man, I know you're busier uh, than, than a bee. Where did you play this weekend? Oh, this weekend we did... Um I just got done producing an album for Michael McElrath, so we did a CD release party at the Dubliner on Saturday night. How'd that go? It went great. It was fun. That's a great record. Uh, Michael McElrath has been in this studio, uh, the record he did. What was the name of that? The, this is called um, um, One of a Kind. Yeah, One of a Kind. It's uh, a tribute to Mary Smith. His lovely, his lovely wife who passed way too soon. Lonnie, I remember you when I was just a child. You were in a uh, uh, rock and roll trio called Joker's Wild. Mm -hmm. That was back when I was just a child as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, a wild, the record straight here. but a wild child. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of music? Would you consider that psychedelic rock that I, you guys were playing? Most assuredly. Yeah. 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 We started as a five-piece band and... Um, Lost our guitar player because I, I kept writing stuff and I wanted to play guitar on it. And uh, so eventually the guitar player left. We became a quartet. And then when the keyboard player found Jesus and left, uh, we decided to follow in the steps of Hendrix and Cream and right. be a power trio. Well, that was the uh, that was the height of the power trio era. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, played the Armory Circuit, certainly up on the uh, Iron Range, uh, probably Hibbing, Duluth, Virginia, yep. where I saw you, my hometown of Virginia. But uh, you played all over the state, didn't you? All over. Yeah. yeah. And as far away as uh, we played uh, Kansas City, um, a few other places in the... It was St. Louis. We were, yeah, we were kind of all over the place. So uh, what guitar were you playing back then? I know you probably had hundreds of guitars over the years, but in that trio... I've seen photos of myself with a Les Paul and a 335 and even a couple of shots with a Stratocaster, but mostly I was playing Gibsons. And what uh, what amps were you going through for the guitar nuts out there? We uh, we had a deal with Sun amplifiers. Really? And they were horrible, but <laughs> but they gave them to us. So but a deal's a deal. And then toward the end, toward the end, we uh, we I switched over to Marshalls. Yeah. Wow. I bet it. You were probably loud as well, loud, loud, loud yeah. yeah. We're going to listen to a track, uh, a bit of a, a song called All I See Is You. Did you write this song? I wrote this, yeah. And this was when Jokers were still a five-piece. This was the very first thing we ever recorded. All right, we're going to listen to a bit of Jokers Wild uh, with my guest Lonnie Knight called All I See Is You. Joker's Wild, the five piece to an all I see is you. Where did you record that line? We did that at K Bank. Virtually had no other choices back then. That and was the legendary studio. The legendary studio, which is still in existence to this day. And uh, that is where uh, the Trashmen uh, did Surf and Bird. Mm -hmm. The Castaways did Liar Liar. Dave Dudley did Six Days on the Road. You bet. Yeah. What was the chronology? Was it K Bank, Universal Audio, Mike's Side? Uh, cookhouse, Creation. I mean, it's had a million names, but that building is still there. Yeah, and hundreds of great musicians have gone through, recorded, and rehearsed there. Steve Weiss, uh, our good buddy, runs at his creation mm -hmm. now, one of the best uh, pr one of the best studio cats in town. Where did, uh, what label did that come out on? That was on, uh, probably on Twin Town. 
Really? Yeah. There's Twin Town back Now, there's then? Twin Town and there's Twin Tone. Right. But uh, Twin Town was, um, David Anthony was involved with that. Okay. Before. And then, of course, we got Twin Town Guitars now. Yeah. Twin Tone Records, thing. of course, yeah. was the great uh, label that uh, Birth Curtis A, The Suburbs, uh, The Replacements, and others. Before that, though, you had a band called The Ravons that we're going to listen to a little bit at the end of this uh, set. Uh, tell us about when uh, when you got your first guitar and, and when you got the rock and roll bug. Um, boy, a door to door salesman from uh, from Dell's Music in Richfield really came to the house and said, uh, "Do you have anybody in your family who would like to take guitar lessons?" And I went. <laughs> yeah. I was about eleven or twelve at the time. Wow! And. Uh, so that's how it started. My very first guitar was a, um, a Harmony folk guitar, which mm -hmm. I still have. I found it in my, my parents' garage in, cool. uh, in Oregon a few years back and brought it home and had it restored. And I went from that to a, um, the first real electric I had was a Fender Jazzmaster, which could pay for my retirement if I still had it. <laughs> We've all had those, oh, haven't yeah. we? Slipped through our hands. To the mists of time. Oh, yes. If we'd only known. So what tunes were you uh, starting to play when you were just starting out? Well, uh, the very first thing I ever played that I could get through start to finish was an old song called Michael Row the Boat Ashore sure. by the Highwaymen. Hallelujah. Not those Highwaymen, the right. other Highwaymen. Right. Yeah. And then when I when the Ravons got together, um, Dick Wiegand and I were both heavily influenced by everybody from... Jeff Beck, you know, the early Yardbird stuff, to Chet Atkins, and constantly learning from each other, and, and we tackled a whole lot of stuff, Yeah. Who was in the original Ray Vons then? Dick and Larry Wiegand. Two and, brothers? Uh, yep, guitar and bass, Harry Neal's on drums, and then me on guitar. And the Wiegands went on to play uh, in Crow. Yes. That uh, had, you know, quite a bit of renown in their time. Mm-hmm. So what uh, were you doing? What high school dances? And, high school uh, dances. Miller's Fireside Pizza was our first real gig okay. on Penn Avenue out in Richfield, and uh, and we what, did. What was it? One of those uh, great exposure gigs and all the pizza you could eat. Yeah, but at the time <laughs> that was worth a lot. Oh yeah. heck yeah! Yeah, and we wound up doing a lot of the armory and ballroom circuit too. So, so how long did the Ravens? Uh, play for before it morphed into Joker's Wild? Probably we were together maybe 63 uh, through 66 and then the uh, the Crow Joker's Wild split, South 40 Joker's Wild split happened. So it was late 66, early 67 that I wound up. Let's with talk Joker's a little bit Wild. about South 40. That's a band I had, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Well, South 40 was was um a combination of some guys from the Jokers and some guys from the Ravons. Okay. And then the rest of us did the Jokers Wild. And then ultimately South 40 turned into Crow. They had a couple other personnel switches. And All right. Well, that, that is something I did not know at filling in the gaps. Uh, I, I love that. Let's talk about some of the other bands around that time. TC Atlantic. Oh, yeah. And uh, you had Crow. Can you remember some of the other? What was Billy Hallquist's band? Oh, um, 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 Thunder Tree. Thunder Tree, Billy right. was with Thunder Tree. And uh, there was, of course, Jim Johnson and the Underbeats, uh, which is still, Jim's still my hero. Right. After all these years, he's the guy I maybe learned more guitar from than anybody. And he is, uh, you see him every now and then, he'll swing in the shots. Yep. And catch a show. What were some of the guitar players that, uh, not necessarily uh, Twin Cities guitar players, that, that a, the young Lonnie uh, Knight started listening to? Number one on the list would have to, for electric would be Jeff Beck, Okay, I think. And then uh, when I first got into the acoustic thing, um, I was going back and forth from electric to acoustic around 67, 68. I was listening to a lot of uh, the British folk rock thing that was going on. Pentangle. Sure, Bert uh, Yeah, Bert Jansen, yeah. John Renborn. Sure. Two phenomenal guitar players. Absolutely. In fact, uh, 
I believe we've we've lost both Bert and John in the last couple of years. Man, they're dropping like flies. I know, and we just lost Keith Emerson. Yeah, it's in Glenn Fry before that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it hasn't been a good year for uh, for rock and roll longevity. We've got Lonnie Knight in the studio for the entire show tonight on the Wall of Power Radio Hour. He brought his guitar. He's going to honor us uh, with a live performance towards the uh, in the last set. And coming up, we are going to listen to a mashup of a song called Whenever that he wrote with Larry Wiegand that the Ravons recorded in 1965. And, and 50 years later, you guys recut this. Thing. Yep. The original players, all four of us, went out to uh, Airborne Studio in Richfield, Peter Bourne's place, and redid a couple of the songs that we'd recorded in 65. Hopefully played them a little better. <laughs> <laughs> And look good while you were doing it. We've got the Ravons coming up, a mashup of uh, whatever, first from 1965, and it's going to morph into a song recorded, uh, same song, in 2014. And then more with Lonnie Knight on the Wall of Power Radio Hour. <laughs> Northern Sun Merchandising has gifts with a social message. Whether you're looking for T-shirts, buttons, stickers, some festive swag, or even Doctor Who stuff, Northern Sun will have it. From pop to political, Northern Sun is often humorous, never dull. Open from 10 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 4 on Saturdays. Make sure to come by and see us. Northern Sun is located at 2916 East Lake Street in Minneapolis or online at northernsun.com. Northern Sun, products for progressives since 1979. Hello, fellow AM950 listeners. This is Jason from Nightingale. Since 2012, my wife, Chef Carrie McCabe Johnson, and I have built a special eclectic gathering place at Linda Island 26 in Minneapolis. Nightingale's focus is on offering inventive, seasonal, local, and sustainable dishes, thoughtfully crafted cocktail, wine, beer, and spirit lists, welcoming hospitality, and a cozy, fun atmosphere. Enjoy Nightingale's full menu seven days a week, from 4 p.m. until 1 a.m. Weekend brunch starts at 10 a.m. both Saturday and Sunday. Find more at nightingalempls.com. Health Connections. Join us as we examine what role our health plays in growing and living life to the fullest. Dedicated to exploring the connections between our health and well-being, Health Connections celebrates our heart, body, mind, and soul. Engaging discussions will delve into our relationship with ourselves, each other, and the world around us. Life is a journey. Let's make it an adventure. And let's talk about it. Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. here on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Tune in every Saturday at 2 p.m. to hear the voices of Minnesota's immigrants on reflections of new Minnesotans. Listen as we have fascinating and engaging conversations on their lives. Who are they and what are their stories? How are they making a home in Minnesota and how is the state responding? Saturdays at 2 on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. That's Reflections of New Minnesotans with your host, Julian Akessa Poti, every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. right here on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. The number one source of the Twin Cities Gay Scene is all digital. Follow Twin Cities Gay Scene on Facebook and Twitter. Sign up for the Scene Shot email blast for weekly updates and chances to win great prizes. No app is needed to view the bi-weekly web editions of Scene. It's GLBTQ Media for the mobile generation. Find it all at TwinCitiesGayScene.com. That's TwinCitiesGayScene.com. 
Hi, I'm Brad, the engineer here on the Wall of Power Radio Hour and a graduate of the Minneapolis Media Institute Recording Program. At MMI, I was able to study something I'm passionate about and turn it into a career. So what are you waiting for? If you're interested in audio production or designing video games and websites, take the first step. Visit mediainstitute.edu and get registered for the next open house. Meet the award-winning faculty and test out the studios for yourself. mediainstitute.edu. Enroll, graduate, work. Welcome back to the Wall of Power Radio Hour. This is your host, Paul Metza. With me in the studio all evening is guitarist, songwriter, producer, man about town, Mr. Lonnie Knight. Lonnie, you know, I remember you really came into my consciousness in, I want to say, the early to mid-70s with an acoustic record you did, was that song for City Mouse? The first one was Family in the Wind. That okay. was 73, and then Song for City Mouse was uh, 74. You were really, uh, and still are, but very respected as as a kind of a singer-songwriter, folk singer, after these years of being a uh, power trio rock and roller. And? <laughs> well, what, what was the transition? Um... I fell in love with that music. Okay. Again, going back to Janch and Renborn and some of the other British artists I heard, and Dylan, of course, you know, and and, uh, and James Taylor, Joni Mitchell. I started to hear this stuff, and my head just wanted to go there. Right. So I got a nice acoustic and started finger picking. And uh, plus, you know, you don't have to deal with drummers. <laughs> right. And as, when you're solo act, you get the check, you divide by mm -hmm. one, and yeah. yeah, it's the same number at the beginning of the equation as at the end. I totally get that. What was your, tell us a little bit about uh, your relationship with Sound 80, which was considered, boy, at the time, one of the greatest uh, studios in, in the country. I was with a, a management company called Projects 4 which also had Michael Johnson at the time. Okay. And I had cut some stuff on a little uh, Sony reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, one of those bounce track things where you could do two, do a track and then bounce something new onto the second track and keep going back and forth, ping-ponging. And Keith Christensen, who ran um, Projects 4, played the stuff for Herb Pilhofer, and Herb decided he had to have me in to do a recording session. Not knowing that I couldn't read a note of music. Mm -hmm. or so I went and I did one session with Herb and it was for a commercial and it was successful. And suddenly I was getting calls, you know, once a week, twice a week, three times a week. I ultimately wound up on staff at Sound 80. And hmm. yeah, it was, it was a wonderful time. And this was before they went digital, correct? This was mostly in the analog day. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That, uh, you think about the early 1970s when I kind of came of age as a fan of a, uh, of acoustic guitar. And, of course, we had Leo Kotke was mm -hmm. our god. Peter Lang yep. from the Twin Cities. Uh, Peter and, and, and Leo still live here. Did you get a chance to hang out or do any shows with those guys? I hung out a little bit with Leo, mostly at Newt Coupe. Right. Um, run into him there and we'd chat a bit. Uh, Peter I know a little better. You know, We've done some of the, the Dylan tribute shows together. And uh, Peter's out on the road right now with er, with Richard Ruskin and uh, another artist from the old Tacoma Records. It's a sort of a um, legacy of John Fahey. Tour. Right, and I think they're yeah. coming to the Dakota uh, oh, soon. Great. Yeah, yeah, I definitely have. To. Well, you know, Peter fell down and broke a bunch of bones mm -hmm. a couple years ago, so it's good to hear he's back. Now... The 70s, you were also playing with a, uh, occasionally with a band called City Mouse yep. out of Mankato. Yeah, I had two runs with City Mouse. Great yeah. group. Yeah. And so, uh, and those guys are still playing. Yep. Uh, so you, 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 were, you were kind of making a name for yourself as an acoustic guitar player, as a songwriter, but you're also playing uh, electric, too, with those cats, mm -hmm. right? Now, who do you remember around that uh, time? Now, you know, when I think about you, I think about... Uh, the places I was still living up on the Aaron Ranch that I wanted to go and play, the Grand Mansell, 
you know, back then there was a, a scene going on, acoustic scene at the Ground Rounds. Yeah. Um, there was Brines and Stillwater, the Freight House, but there was a really great collection of musicians that I associate you with, like Barb With, Michael Monroe, Michael McElrath. Yep. And you have, uh, over the years, become kind of a, a, a superb producer, and you've worked with not only Michael McElrath that you just told us about, mm -hmm. but uh, tell us a little bit more about some of your producing projects. There's a wonderful uh, songwriter named Madeline Hart, who's had several albums out. I produced her latest, and uh, it's a gorgeous record, if I do say so myself. Well, we had a number of, of heavyweight musicians on it. So, how, when did you start to play outside of, uh, you know, the Minneapolis or the upper Midwest? Because I was looking at your biography at LonnieKnight.com, and Knight is K-N-I-G-H-T, LonnieKnight.com. And it said you got down to uh, Dallas, and you, you got around the country a little bit. Yeah, like uh, Joker's Wild were out um, a little bit. We played uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, a few other places, but it really started when I signed on with the, the Bitter End coffee house circuit and played college coffee houses all over the country. So who signed you to that? Uh, the woman's name was Marilyn Lipsius. She ran it out of New York. and um, Actually associated with the Bitter End coffee house. Yes. That Paul yeah. Colby uh, was the uh, kind of the godfather. Mm -hmm. then. How did you, uh, how did she become aware of you? I'm not sure. You know, I, memory is not serving me well on right. that one. But I got involved with them and basically they would book college coffee houses and what they called mini concerts. You know, I think it was Keith Christensen that got the ball rolling on that, now if memory serves. But I played uh, up and down the East Coast, played uh, several places in Texas, a little bit out West, you know, and it really got around during that period of time. You know, it spurred a memory, Lonnie, uh, back when I started playing that college coffee house circuit with uh, Tim O'Keefe, we used to call ourselves... Metza and O'Keefe, and we build ourselves as the only Irish Finnish blues duo in the upper Midwest, which probably to this day we were. <laughs> we did a lot of uh, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee stuff, among uh -huh. other things. But I remember seeing a check that was cut to you. You might have been playing the, uh, the week or two after at the coffee house in uh, Moorhead, Minnesota, at the university there. And it was for $300. Yeah. And you were playing solo, and I said to myself, if I ever made $300 on a gig, I would call myself a complete success. Yeah, well, if I ever make that again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was 1970s money, uh -huh. you know. But, uh, yeah, like gas was, what, 38 know, cents? Yeah. Cigarettes were 55. I mean, a guy could, uh, a guy could make a, a nice little <laughs> living doing two or three of those a week. Uh, in our, our case, two or three of those a month. And do you know how musicians' pay has kept up with the cost of living increases? No. No, it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I totally get it. See, we hooked up. You were kind enough when I was trying to save the historic Guthrie Theater from demolition starting in 2001. The campaign went to 2007 when... Uh, uh, the powers, the, the the dark powers that be, uh, tore the place down. You were a part of several benefits I put together, and you wrote a song that we're going to uh, listen to at the end of this set called "Conversation with a Wrecking Ball." Mm -hmm. Did you ever get a chance to play the Guthrie? Uh, I did play the Guthrie. I played the Guthrie with Herb Pilhofer and uh, with a big band. It was wonderful fun. But you know, I, I just ha was just thinking about that. So many of, you know, we're talking about getting older as players, and so many of us only see each other at funerals these days. And I've realized how lucky you and I are because we get to see each other at causes. And, <laughs> and today, right on. Yeah. I've got my bottom line. I've got my mouth to feed. I've got my stockholders. We've got our own. I don't do well with dreamers. I don't like me. The two gingers just can't get enough of Paul Metza. He's smooth, yet strong. A great mixer and very refreshing. The two gingers are his biggest fans. They're at practically every bar, club, and restaurant in Minnesota to see his shows. And now they've taken to following Paul around the country. 
Texas, New York, Nebraska. You never know where you may find the two gingers. Just ask the bartender for them. Two gingers whiskey. What could happen? The number one source of the Twin Cities gay scene is all digital. Follow Twin Cities Gay Scene on Facebook and Twitter. Sign up for the Scene Shot email blast for weekly updates and chances to win great prizes. No app is needed to view the bi-weekly web editions of Scene. It's GLBTQ Media for the mobile generation. Find it all at TwinCitiesGayScene.com. That's TwinCitiesGayScene.com. This is Dan Brooks, Senior Vice President and Financial Advisor with RBC Wealth Management. For the past 19 years, I've been managing wealth for individuals, institutions, and corporate retirement plan sponsors. Throughout my career, I've seen common traits in successful investors. They include the courage to be diversified, the willingness to work with a professional, the discipline to follow a plan, and patience. I welcome the opportunity to help contribute to your financial success. Call me at 612-371-2396. Bringing great Cuban food to South Minneapolis all year round. Enjoy the festive environment of Victor's 1959 Cafe. Featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives, Victor's offers authentic Cuban cuisine. Stop in and enjoy revolutionary cooking for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. For an entree, try the pulled pork, sweet plantains, or other Cuban delicacies. Be sure to try Nikki's original champagne mojito, too. Victor's, 38th and Grand in South Minneapolis. More at eatlocalminnesota.com. What's worse than having a stinky house? Having a stinky house and not knowing it. Odds are your house stinks and you don't notice. That's where the carpet and duct cleaning guys at Zero Res come in. This month you can get your air ducts Zero Res clean starting at $20 per vent. Get three rooms Zero Res clean starting at $129. Call Zero Res today for details. 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. -E -E Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards, it spells the same. Hi, this is Paul Metza on behalf of the Wall and Power Radio Hour and AM950. We'd like to invite you to a great benefit, Water for Flint, a benefit for the Community Foundation of Greater Flint, Michigan. We have over 25 musicians participating and donating their time on March 25th, 2016 at the Parkway Theater from 7 to 10 p.m. at the corner of 48th in Chicago in South Minneapolis. Sponsored by the Wall and Power Radio Hour and AM950. With a look at your AM 950 forecast, I'm Peter Lee. Decreasing clouds tonight with lows in the mid-20s, northwest winds 5 to 10 miles an hour, a partly cloudy Sunday with highs in the lower 40s, partly cloudy Sunday night with lows in the upper 20s, and a partly cloudy Monday with highs near 50. Be inspired. Turn your old home into your dream home. This weekend only at the Parade of Homes Remodelers Showcase. Get your free guidebook at Holiday and plan your tour at Parade of Homes Online. Sponsored by Marvin Windows and Doors. Welcome back to the Wall of Power Radio Hour. This is your host, Paul Metza. My guest in the studio for the entire show, guitarist extraordinaire, Mr. Lonnie Knight. We just listened to a little bit of a song he wrote and recorded on his record, Portals, called Looking for a Good Time. And let's talk a little bit about those years when you were looking for a good uh, time, Lonnie. Uh, uh, uh. Because you've been, uh, you know... Uh, kind of at the forefront, really, in the Twin Cities music uh, community is uh, you're very proud of your sobriety. Yes, absolutely, yeah. Tell us the dark days that led up to it and then what the sobriety has done for you. It was a different world back then. I remember playing one gig where I was, um, I mean, a lot of us drank. You know, it was just, it just went hand in hand with the business. Yeah. A lot of the incentive to play gigs uh You'd get paid a certain amount of money, but and a free bar tab would come along with it. I know guys that wound up playing gigs for free in order to pay off their bar tabs. Right. You know. Um, Don't bring me into this conversation. But no, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't bring another name in anywhere. But you know, and our heroes, the Jerry Jeff Walkers, the uh, I mean, geez, you name it. They were Keith loaded Richards. half the time. Yeah, and. We were proud of our accomplishments, right. drinkers, for a while. I remember one gig where I was. Not drinking. And the club owner came up to me. I was drinking coffee. He said, don't you go up on stage with that cup of coffee. You get yourself a drink. I'm selling booze here. Right. Uh, it got out of hand, got severely out of hand. And in 1997, um, you know, they talk about personal bottom. I found mine 
and had to make some serious changes. And I did, and I've never looked back. If you don't mind getting a little per- about me asking a personal question. So when you see Bottom, what, what exact, was that like daily drinking? Were you drinking on the gig or? I was a binge drinker. I would occasionally lose it at a gig. For the most part, I could hold it together. Um, but boy, I'd go on a tear and I'd be, be out of commission for a week. Hmm. And then I'd be sober for a week. So I figured, oh, okay, well, I stopped, so no problem. But... Um, in 97, it was the culmination of uh, the Hoop Snakes breaking up when uh, Bruce McCabe went with Johnny Lang. Okay. So it was, that was the best paycheck I'd ever had. I lost the band. Uh, my wife moved out on me. It has been gone ever since. And I rolled my car on the Crosstown. Wow. So those, those uh, I rolled my car on the Crosstown with a 0.25 alcohol con- blood alcohol content at noon on a Saturday. Wow. So <laughs> that, it was time to make some changes. The trifecta of disaster. Yeah. Man. Well, so you've been uh, sober for almost 20 years now. Yep, a little over 19. Congratulations. Thanks. And I know you're out there in the community uh, and you've always got your hand out for any uh, musicians and I'm sure other friends that uh, are looking for a little advice from Uncle Lonnie. <laughs> Whatever I can give. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the hoop snakes because that was um, a, uh, a time that, that I remember I walked in uh, to the five corners where I, where I did uh, 237 consecutive two day, Tuesdays with the... Uh, Paul Metza group and the hoop snakes used to have the Wednesday night slot for years and years and years. And of course that was Bruce McCabe and uh, Charlie Bingham, one of the greatest uh, electric guitar players to come out of town. Who, Charlie's a monster. Yeah. Who cut his teeth with uh, Lamont Cranston as did Bruce McCabe. And one, uh, one Wednesday I walked in and you were playing guitar. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I didn't, you know, I, I knew enough about your background to know you used to play electric guitar, but when I think Lonnie Knight, I think acoustic guitar, you know, mm-hmm. par excellent. Um, so how did that gig come around? I had, well, I was friends with, with Pat Hayes and I had heard that Charlie was leaving the hoop snake. So I gave Bruce a call and said, told him I wanted to audition for the gig and did just went over and sat around Bruce's house for an afternoon. And, uh, uh, to Charlie's credit, it took two of us to replace him. David Island came on board. At That's the right. Time. Island has played right. <laughs> you know, another guy that, uh, phenomenal musician, plays uh, guitar as well as he plays saxophone, mm-hmm. among oh, other yeah. things. Yeah. So how long did you uh, have that run with the Hoop Snakes? That ran uh, a little over a year. And then Johnny Lang came along and grabbed Bruce. Right. And it, to can try to continue the Hoop Snakes without Bruce would be like, doing the Rolling Stones without Mick Jagger. Yeah. Just, there was no sense to that. So. Impossible. Yeah. So you went into a tailspin, all of these things kind of hitting at the same time. Well, yeah, you know, and, uh, I guess you could put it that way. Yeah. 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 How did you dig yourself back out? Um, treatment, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when did you, you know, after you playing high uh, or hammered or to whatever degree, for years, did you find it hard to find your, you know, your center, so to speak, playing sober? That's what scared me when I faced the concept. Because, I mean, let's be perfectly honest, I don't regret a lot of what I did while I was drinking because it does open up the synapses. It does change Mm -hmm. the way you perceive things, and it gives you insights that you might not have otherwise, and that is not advocating it in any way, shape, or form. What I found out, and, you know, thank God I did this right. I talked to a lot of people. I talked to to musicians who were former drunks. Uh, I had a wonderful sponsor, and that quelled a lot of the fears, and what I found is that you can find those places without chemicals, without, you know, artificially altering your mindset. Right. And I also found that um, when I had been drinking, there were nights that were amazingly wonderful, where just, you know, everything cut loose. The zone was there. It was heaven. And there were nights that were absolute hell. The nights that are heaven are still there. And 
the worse it gets when the band isn't playing well, when the PA system stinks, is a mild purgatory compared right, to the right, hell that right, it used to be. Right. So, you it's, know, all things considered, in every way, shape, and form, it was beneficial. To so so it's, it's more like the second ring, of, uh, second ring of Dante's Inferno, not the seventh. There you go. Right. <laughs> so what... Uh, so you started playing again. What were you in? When did you start producing? Um, I produced stuff as far back as the the seventies. I did some things with Mojo Buford, and uh, then off and on, you know, and always had a, a big hand in producing my own material. And um, I'm trying to remember now. Well, I had a little basement project studio, and I produced a lot of demos for people and little vanity projects and this and that and got further and further into it. Then I worked with um, some people out of Iowa and produced some things. And uh, Yeah, for Mountain, Mountain Railroad Records, correct? Mountain Railroad was out of Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Stephen yeah. Powers. Yeah. I, I did some production work with Joe Punzak out of Des Moines. And, okay. Uh, and just it's just sort of you know grown over the years. I don't make a point of going out and seeking production work, but um, occasionally I'll I'll get the gig and it's it's great fun. We're working on a uh, retrospective for Billy Hallquist right now. In fact, may he rest in peace. Yes, yes, a wonderful cat. You can find more and contact my friend Lonnie Knight at LonnieKnight.com, K-N-I-G-H-T. First name is Lonnie with an I-E. I-E, the Lonnie Knight, L-O-N-N-I-E, K-N-I-G-H-T.com. And you also have a little day gig. You also do some web design. I do. Some web design, graphics work. I do CD packaging for people and stuff. And uh, it keeps you out of the cubicle, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah. I see here that you played with a guy that I've never met. I know he's from Hibbing, Minnesota, so I've kept my eye on him for years. Freddie Arger. Sure. Yep. Tell us a little bit about how you met Freddie and, and his routine. Fred was, um, I still call him Fred. Uh, we met back in the early, early 70s. He was living in Minneapolis and... Uh, we were both on that bitter end coffee house circuit. And okay, we were doing a few tours together. We were both uh, signed by George Hansen to Symposium Records, and um, I played on his record. He played on my records, and we just became fast friends. He'll be in town. In fact, while this show is being broadcast, we'll be at the uh, Eagles Club doing the Judy Larson show. So I'm, I'm going to stop by. I'm going to yeah. I'm going to do a yeah. tune. Uh, for our good friend Judy Larson, uh, longtime love of one of the greatest musicians ever in the Twin Cities, Bill Hinckley. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Symposium Records. Well, George Hansen had Symposium Records, and he had, um, who did he have, Art Resnick, he had Fred, myself. I believe he recorded the very first Leo Kotke album. Right. And... Uh, was that, was that symposium, was that the one uh, live at the Scholar, or was that Circle Around the Sun, that great Leo Kaki record? It was one of those two. Yeah, it was yeah. one of those two. Yeah. I have both. Of course, I bowed yeah. down to Leo. Yeah, George passed away way, way too early. And uh, Whatever happened to the Mojo Buford uh, recordings? Mojo, uh, longtime Minneapolis kid who played with Muddy Waters in Chicago for years, great yeah. harmonica player. I've still got a copy of them. I think Denny Johnson with Minnie Paul Music. Okay. He and Mike Jan have the rights to that stuff. We almost signed the album to Blue Thumb Records, but there was a breakdown in communication over the money or something. I, I don't know the details, but uh, the stuff has languished for years. You're and, telling me there was a miscommunication about money with a record deal? In money? the music business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but now you've got some records... Uh, out over way across both ponds. Tell us something, about that. Something happened in the 70s. Foreign exchange students, or I mean, this is, you know, long before the internet. For those of you who are younger, there was a time with no internet. Um, I guess a couple of Japanese foreign exchange students took my albums back to Japan with them, and I've been a kind of a cult hero over there ever since. That's fantastic. So a few years ago, uh, an Asian company got a hold of me and uh, 
bought the Asian rights to Song for a City Mouse and um, and uh, uh, the other one from the 70s, Brain Dead. Right. So that they've been re-released on CD in Japan and Korea. Uh, just a couple of years ago, a company in Germany got a hold of us and bought the entire catalog, Joker's Wild catalog. So all of that stuff has been released as an album called Liquid Giraffe, both on vinyl and compact disc. And you've played in Japan. I, I uh, About three years ago, I went over to open for Don Nix. Wow. Who wrote Going Down. Sure. Yeah. And he's a great producer as well. He's wonderful. And um, his bass player got turned away at Customs. So... The Japanese piano player that they had hired had to play bass, so Don's lead player decided to play mostly rhythm in order to yell the changes to the bass player, who didn't know any of the songs, on bass anyway. And I wound up playing 60% uh, of the lead work for Don in addition to doing my own solo sets. Fantastic. We've I played had... on a I played on a Japanese Fender Stratocaster that we borrowed that had little pieces of scotch or little pieces of masking tape on the neck saying F G A. <laughs> <laughs> Be satisfied. <laughs> We've got Lonnie Knight in the studio. We're gonna listen to a tune of his office record portals called Anthem, and then he's gonna come back and honor us with a live tune and last set of the Wall of Power Radio Hour. I am the wind. I sweep the streets, I call the rain To fall in sheets To cool the blisters in my heart To ease the torture in my feet I sing the anthem of silent people The two gingers just can't get enough of Paul Metza. He's smooth, yet strong, a great mixer and very refreshing. The two gingers are his biggest fans. They're at practically every bar, club and restaurant in Minnesota to see his shows. And now they've taken to following Paul around the country. Texas, New York, Nebraska. You never know where you may find the two gingers. Just ask the bartender for them. Two gingers whiskey. What could happen? Northern Sun Merchandising has gifts with a social message. Whether you're looking for T-shirts, buttons, stickers, some festive swag, or even Doctor Who stuff, Northern Sun will have it. From pop to political, Northern Sun is often humorous, never dull. Open from 10 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 4 on Saturdays. Make sure to come by and see us. Northern Sun is located at 2916 East Lake Street in Minneapolis or online at northernsun.com. Northern Sun, products for progressives since 1979. Supporting the best local and independently owned restaurants in the Twin Cities has never been easier. You'll find an expansive list of local dining options at eatlocalminnesota.com, from classic American comfort food to authentic flavors from around the world. The dedicated staff at Nightingale Restaurant take pride in presenting a thoughtful and delicious approach to food and drink, whether you're visiting for dinner, happy hour, or brunch. Their focus on made-from-scratch meals using sustainable and local ingredients is likely to make Nightingale your go-to spot for inspired food and drinks. Nightingale, Lindell and 26th in Minneapolis. Situated by Moore Lake on Highway 65, Crooner's Lounge and Supper Club is without a doubt one of the most beautiful, upscale, casual dining restaurants in the Twin Cities. Dine from their finest quality menu and dance to the coolest singers and bands. Featuring live music with no cover charge every day of the week. Find them online at croonersloungemn.com. Appliance savings guaranteed, then save more during Warner Stallion's free tax rebate event. Now through March 21st, get a 7.5% rebate over and above Warner Stallion's guaranteed low prices on Whirlpool, GE, Samsung, Frigidaire, LG, and more. Save on dishwashers, laundry pairs, refrigerators, and hundreds of kitchen packages. Get free local delivery, professional installation, and 18-month special financing. Guaranteed low prices and an exclusive tax rebate through March 21st at all nine Warner Stallion appliance stores. 
Hi, I'm Brad, the engineer here on the Wall of Power Radio Hour and a graduate of the Minneapolis Media Institute Recording Program. At MMI, I was able to study something I'm passionate about and turn it into a career. So what are you waiting for? If you're interested in audio production or designing video games and websites, take the first step. Visit mediainstitute.edu and get registered for the next open house. Meet the award-winning faculty and test out the studios for yourself. mediainstitute.edu. Enroll, graduate, work. You're back with the Wall of Power Radio Hour. This is your host, Paul Metza. My guest in the studio for the entire show, guitarist, songwriter, producer, and cool cat Lonnie Knight, who's going to grace us with a couple of songs here in just a bit. Lonnie is going to be kicking off the Water for Flint benefit Friday, March 25th at the Parkway Theater starting at 7 o'clock. It's a show that the Wall and Power Radio Hour and AM 950 are sponsoring. All money is going to the Greater Foundation of Flint and then FlintKids.org to support the 10,000 plus kids that have been affected by the water crisis in Flint. That's Friday, March 25th with 30 other musicians at the Parkway Theater, 48th in Chicago in Minneapolis. Lonnie, you were playing the guitar before the show started. It sounds so beautiful. What is that? It's a James Goodall. Oh, my God. Yeah, GoodallGuitars.com. Yeah. That is, uh, what What year is that? When was that built? This was built in 2003. Wow. Well, play us a couple of tunes and tell us uh, what we're going to hear. All right. Well, this one, they're both from the new album. This one's called, uh, this one's for you. Staring out on a rainy evening All the poets in the big hotel Empty hands over sign and paper Still waiting for the starting bell A Pontiac cruises round the corner Faces hidden from the ones inside And all the poets shake their heads And wonder was something born Was something died It used to be so hard to say I always thought I'd find a chance To say them all one day but I can tell you That I still love you I can show you If you still want me to This one's for you in a dim cathedral Stained hearts on a downhill ride And we dance to a steel piano All the poets take a step and slide All the drinks have turned to water All the cars have turned for home The Pontiac cruises round the corner Steel echoes on rusty chrome All the words that used to be so hard to say I always thought I'd find a chance to say them all one day and I can tell you that I still love you and I can show you if you still want me to this one's for you
used to be so hard to say I always thought I'd find a chance to say them all one day I can tell you that I still love you and I can show you if you still want me to This one looks for you This one's for you was gorgeous Lonnie oh, thank you Lonnie Knight in the studio he wrote that song he just played that song just sung that song so uh, grateful that you could take the time to spend with us on the wall of power radio hour we look forward to uh, seeing and hearing you on uh, March 25th Friday night uh, the uh, water for Flint benefit at the Looking Parkway forward theater to being there if, if, if anybody wants to come out and hear some electric stuff I do the third Thursday of every month which is this coming up Thursday at the Fridley Legion with a band called smoking section what time I uh, believe we start at 7 or 7 30 and that's with Paul Mayasich on guitar and the guy is just absolutely amazing best slide player in town oh he's wonderful yeah and Mike and Andy Boderman on the, in the band so you can't you can't beat that if we got time we talked about the thing you always forget to say. Yeah. Yeah, I just, because I, I need to, because the new album, Portals, is basically um, a labor of love with me and some some very important friends of mine. And I wanted to mention the other players yeah, on go the ahead. album. It's Reed Papke's playing bass. Uh, my dear friend Richard Grossman is on percussion. And the a wonderful, and you've had her on the show, Barbara Meyer. Yes, Barbara's Is doing great. some vocals on the thing. And they were all on that track, so I wanted to make sure that And Richard it. Grossman <laughs> teaches out here at the uh, Minneapolis Media yeah. Institute. I just bumped into him. And Richard's married to Madeline Hart, whose album I produced. What a small world, <laughs> huh? I'll tell you. <laughs> Lonnie Knight, thank you so much. Find out more about Lonnie Knight at LonnieKnight.com. Lonnie, take us out with the tune I think you said was written by Fred Archer. Freddie Archer wrote this, yeah. What's and it called? It's on the new album. It's it's the Paris connection here, the French connection. The last song, this one's for you, was sort of, uh, I wrote it after a trip to Paris. Um, this one, Fred wrote, it's called Beeritz. Listening to the Wall of Power Radio Hour. The show was produced by Paul Metza, engineered by Brad Knaber, and recorded at the Minneapolis Media Institute. We'd like to ask you to support our sponsors. We'd like to thank our guest, Lonnie Knight. Follow us online at wallofpowerradio.com. Like us on Facebook at Wall of Power Radio Hour. And like my dad used to tell me, remember to be kind and make someone happy.